Hi, I'm Jerry Cole. A few years ago, one of my customers approached me at a woodworking show and asked me if I'd be willing, or interested I should say, in doing a presentation to industrial arts teachers who were having seminars at one of the state colleges here in Massachusetts. Uh, I've got to admit, I was pretty honored, flattered by that. Uh, also very anxious to do it because I'd really like to teach. So anyway, to make a long story short, about a week before this thing's supposed to take place, I get a phone call from him and basically said because I don't have a bachelor's degree that the school decided I wasn't qualified to do that presentation. Uh, needless to say, I kind of put my undies in a bunch and I guess I can understand why I couldn't teach in a school. But one of the things that's really great about the way things are today is I can do everything I can to put what I know on the internet and on video. So what I've decided to do is to start a video series teaching people how to do woodwork. My main target to start off with are the folks sitting at home with very little money that have an urge to get into the hobby sitting there saying, I just don't have thousands of dollars to go out and buy new equipment. And what we're going to do in this series is we're going to emphasize the fact that if you're not financially able to go out and buy all new equipment, there's hundreds of thousands of saws basically rusting in people's garages because they're scared to use them. In this series, what we're going to do is we're going to take a uh, series about 40 years old. Uh, it's a son, my son Mark gave me, an old uh, gentleman lived across from him about 10 years ago. Uh, was moving out, gave Mark this saw. Mark called me, asked me if I wanted it, and I told him to come in, and he stuck it in the back corner of my shop where we keep all the old equipment, uh, like my planer made in 19, or 1898, I should say. And uh, it sat there for all this time. And when I decided to do this series, I figured, hey, I got that saw sitting back here. I'll pull it out and show people how to rework it. I had absolutely no idea how bad a shape this saw is in. Uh, it's far beyond what most of you would find, but what I want to do in this video is we're going to show you what we're going to be working with here. And we're going to show you over a period of time in our videos how we can make this old Sears as accurate as any saw that we have, would be a thousand dollars if we were to go buy it new. One of the things that I want you to notice here on the top which is obviously the most noticeable part of the saw, is right here. You can notice little marks on the screen. These are actually gouges that are in the saw top. As I rotate this, and bear with me while I do this, this is the easiest way for me to show you this thing. I also want you to notice that down here we've got some heavy scratching. A lot of rust. Here we have some severe scratches that run all the way down here to the back side of the saw. Okay, you can see those pretty well. As I rotate further, you notice there's a big gouge out of the back side. More gouges, okay, in the top. Kind of hard to see these scratches on the video, I'm sure, but trust me, they're there. So what we have is a saw, and I want to show you something here in a second, that these scratches are so severe, or these gouges, I should say, are so severe, there, there's absolutely no way that I can work this out by hand. And just to make matters worse, If you notice here, this is a gouge that gets progressively deeper the further we get to the throat opening. So the first thing I need to do is take a look at this, find out how deep those gouges are. I may or may not be able to machine those out. To check the depth of these gouges in the saw, what I've done is I've taken one of our dial indicator systems 
and I've mounted a tip on it that uh, allows me to get into very small places. I've got my indicator dialed, and you notice I'm out here on the good part of the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide that indicator out. And what you're going to notice when I get into that hole is how we're actually going below zero. Now, if I play around with this, I'm, you know, I just want to get a general ballpark of how deep. I mean, we're, we're seven or eight thousandths deep on some of these. Uh, another one that's the same way, if, if I bear with me, I'm going to turn this saw. And if I do the same procedure, okay, up here, matter of fact, I'm going to go out over this one, okay. I have effectively the, the same depth, I mean, right here next to the throat plate, I'm about seven or eight thousandths. In other words, I know that gouge is seven or eight thousandths deep. There's no way I could sand this down by hand. Uh, my opinion right now is this top is going to need to be taken off, and I'm going to talk to somebody who does surface grinding, which is a procedure they use to flatten and clean tops, and find out if that seven or eight thousandths is within the limits we're allowed, or we can use, I should say, in order to uh, get this top to clean up. Now that we know the condition the top's in, the logical thing to do next would be to open up the saw. Let's take this throat plate out, see what we have to work with, and trust me, this is exactly the way this saw was. I've done nothing to it. Uh, one of the things, I dropped the nut, which is something common. You notice that the blade washer is extremely rusted. This is the blade that came on the saw. Okay, you can see it's a fine piece of equipment there, right? And the worst of it, I'm going to try to move this camera and let you get a good look inside this thing. As you can see, we've got some serious problems with the arbor in this. You notice we've got rust all the way around the flange itself. Uh, I can feel with my finger that there's rust pits on it. But the bad news for me is that shaft is so rusted and so nicked up that I can only get that blade nut on maybe a quarter to half a turn. Now obviously this is going to present some problems and what this tells me is for us to really determine uh, what we're going to do with this thing, I'm going to have to take this thing apart. I can't get in there and really do anything uh, to fix anything right now. So what we're going to need to do is possibly tear this saw down in order to try to make it work. If we take a look at the front of the cabinet, first thing you have to notice is we don't have a, uh, an elevation hand wheel. The uh, blade tilt scale, which normally mounts in here, right, is missing. Uh, I don't know how well you can see this on camera. We've got significant rust here. The whole bottom of the top is rusted, so it looks like things are just going from bad to worse. Uh, what I'm going to do here. I'm going to turn this. Okay. On the right side of the cabinet, there's no blade tilt hand wheel. All right. As we get to the back of the saw, okay, you can notice we've got severe rusting, right, going in all over the place. And one of the things I want to tell you before I make my final rotation of this is when I got this saw, one of the things that have been done to it is this is part of the next item I want to show you. Evidently, the old boy had a problem 
with his arbor pulley, didn't understand that any time you have to work on your arbor pulley, you tilt the blade to give you clearance. He actually cut this hole, right, out of the side of the cabinet. Well, at first I thought, I can't use that in my video, but then I realized if I'm gonna teach people about saws, it's nice if they know what's going on. So what I actually did is we opened the whole side of that saw up, that cabinet. And what you notice is we've, we've just got rust every place. Uh, the elevation gear here, the blade elevation shaft itself, you know, all, all over this thing is rusted. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna find me a pair of channel locks or something. I wanna see if these mechanisms will actually even turn. And then we're gonna flip this thing over and see what the heck we, what we really have. One of the things that I completely overlooked when we were rotating this saw is on the right side where your blade tilt shaft comes out. You notice we've got two different types of screws and for some reason I don't understand why but you notice there's a lot of scratching around here. That's probably from the blade uh, tilt hand wheel but uh, Sears never does this. So what this is telling us is somebody's been in this saw at one time or another. But uh, anyway, I just thought that was kind of curious. Thought I'd point that out to you. Now, the two shafts we're talking about for uh, blade elevation and blade tilt are this one, okay, which locks in to the main housing, is your blade elevation scale, or blade elevation shaft, I should say. And this one over here, okay, right here, is actually the one we use to tilt. And that might be a little hard to distinguish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put me a mark across this thing with a felt tip, just to make life easier for you guys to see. And I'm gonna take my channel locks, right? And you notice that, and it's without a whole lot of force actually, See that, how free that is, okay? It's not frozen up on the elevation. And you also notice that the blade tilt shaft is turning fairly freely. Now, th this is a really, really good thing for us to have happen. In other words, I know the saw is not seized up, okay? Uh, another thing we could check is whether or not the arbor feels like it's right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reach inside the saw, grab a hold of the arbor shaft and just spin it by hand. Uh, it, it's nice and free. I, I don't feel any kind of uh, dragging or I don't hear anything really going on, which tells me my bearing should be in fairly decent shape. But one of the things I hope you can notice uh, on, on the screen is you notice as I rotate that pulley, especially if you look toward the bottom, you're, you're going to notice where this pulley is not round. Okay, see how it kind of got a little oblong to it? Well, this can be a real serious problem in contractor saws. When we get uh, this thing cleaned up and put back together, we're going to show you how you take care of that and improve the cut of the saw by about 25 or 30 percent. One of the things we want to be sure to do before we go flipping this saw over is we want to take off uh, this pin you see here is where the blade guard mounts on a sears. We want to get rid of that and we want to take this part off. This is the, actually the housing that the uh, motor plate and pivot mounts on. Uh, if you got a sears, these by the way take half inch type wrenches. And the first thing I want to do is I want to come in here and loosen up these pins. Okay. I don't know whether you can see there, this, this thing is really, really in bad shape. And on, on your blade guard uh, mount, 
you loosen the bolt and this thing was seized up. I loosened it up off camera. But anyway, we want to take that off. And the reason we're doing that is because the bolts that hold the blade guard mount are almost impossible to get to with anything. Oh, come on, there we go. Don't pull that right off. Pull this. Should use long bolts. And the reason we're doing this is because these saws are kind of bulky. I'm going to be flipping this over by myself, and I don't want to. Obviously, I don't want to damage the motor mount. You know, the part that was mounted here. I, I don't care about the uh, blade guard mount. I uh, didn't get a blade guard mount with this saw. And another thing I want to show you while we're at it is, you notice this, the uh, bottom brace on the cabinet, I never noticed, evidently a spot weld let loose. We're going to have to do some repair on that too. If we're looking at the front of the saw upside down, obviously. The first thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get in here with a long swatted screwdriver and what I want to do is I want to take this pointer for blade tilt. We're going to take it right off. Okay. That will just make it easier to get the cabinet off the saw here a little bit. And then another thing we need to do is over here where the uh, blade tilt shaft runs through and I've got a real mess two different kinds of screws and one of one of these actually I don't know where they got their parts I originally planned on filming uh, the steps when we took the two screws out but uh, remember I told you somebody was in there that is what was attached to the Phillips screw and rather than try to edit out all the audio which uh, wasn't fit for women and children to hear I just figured we'd uh, take it for granted you've got the right size screws you can get out and won't have a problem. Now the next thing I'm going to do here all right, last thing to do is to remove the bolts that hold the uh, cabinet to the saw top. And on, on this series, by the way, they're 9 sixteenths. On these old Sears saws, you have one bolt holding the cabinet on on the pulley side. It's pretty much centered front to back, and on the opposite side, you have two bolts that you have to pull out there. Pretty close to the front and back corner. Actually looks worse 
with a cabinet off than it did with it on.